protesters who marched in their thousands last weekend are planning yet more demonstrations and disruption, but this time many of them will be doing so in direct defiance of the law. A rally in Perth this weekend is still going ahead. That's despite concerns from the WA Premier. And tomorrow in Sydney, Black Lives Matter supporters say they'll march through the streets again, even though the protest has been barred by police. To discuss, we are joined by 2GB and 4BC Radio's Chris Smith and Tasmanian Senator Jackie Lambie. Good morning to both of you. Morning. Good Jackie, morning. how do you feel about this? We might be seeing more protests again this weekend. You know, I find this really heartbreaking. Not only have Australians gone through the bushfires for months on end, or what seemed like months on end, we've been through the COVID-19. People are really, their mental health is, is not... Uh, dealing with this after six or eight months of this sort of stuff going on. Uh, they, are con they are a little agitated. They are still concerned about being outside. They're concerned about having to go back into lockdown because of their mental health. And quite frankly, I'll call it out today, um, I just find this really, really reckless. And if Black Lives Matter so much, then why are you putting them at risk? Why are you putting them at risk and doing this? This is agitating people out there. This is not the way to sell you the cause. This is not good for the cause. Please don't do this. There's other ways around doing this. This is not good. So for, for the sake of the cause, don't do this. You're really emotional about this today, Jackie. Yeah, I am emotional and I think people really need to wake up. This is not the way to do things. It's not the way to do things. Like I said, there's a lot of people out there who have been months on end between bushfires and the COVID-19. People have been in lockdown. Uh, the last thing we want to be doing is going back into lockdown. Uh, the economy is really struggling. Uh, there's gonna, jobs are really going to be hard to get. And to put um, lives at risk again through recklessness. What is wrong with you people? It is so bloody un-Australian. Mm. And Chris, I mean, we still don't know if last weekend's protest caused new cases. Um, I mean, you can hear the emotion there in Jackie's voice. A lot of people, I think, are asking the question that Jackie is this morning. Why do we bother to shut everything down if at the 11th hour we're going to undo all of our good work? Spot on. She said it so well. This is antagonism for the sake of antagonism. And I don't care whether there's a rally outside of, say, New South Wales or Victoria, because most of the other states can't find this virus. So do what you want to do in Perth and Northern Territory. And the Northern Territory got one this weekend, which is great. But come on. This is about picking a fight. They know they're going to get a fight this time because these are illegal. What the Aboriginal organisers need to do is bring the population with them if they've got an argument about incarceration of young Indigenous people. Now, that is a good argument because it's a problem. Now, what is not a problem is police causing the death of Aborigines in custody. It's not the problem it once was. These people are just picking a fight and they've lost the faith and trust of the community. I mean, I think it is a democratic right to protest. They have every right to do so, except at a time like this. These are extreme circumstances. We're in the middle of a pandemic. And we're also hearing reports this morning that our police are being targeted, that there's been a spike in violence against officers. I mean, I think we all need to remember here that the overwhelming majority of those in the force, they're good, hard-working people, aren't they, Jackie? Oh, they certainly are. And um, for those people out there that criticise our, our men and women in blue uniform, seriously, you go and spend a day in their shoes because on a daily basis they are abused. The stuff that they have to go through, they've got to put up with ice addicts out there. They are punched at, they are kicked at. Uh, there is many out there that are suffering with their own mental health but still go to work and show up every day to make sure that we keep peace on our streets. Um, and, you know, for a, bad, for a couple of bad eggs, uh, this is just unacceptable. Everybody in society has bad eggs. But to blame everybody for that action, that's, that's not on. And that's, un once again, that is un-Australian. Um, but what these people do and the courage in that, that they show and the honour that they show year in, year out, in that blue uniform, I praise them for them and good on them for having the courage to be and then stay in that blue uniform. Yep, well said, Jackie. Something else I wanted to talk to you both about this morning. Hollywood and our big streaming services have been impacted by the fallout from the Black Lives Matter movement. So in Australia, Netflix has taken down four shows from comedian Chris Lilly, uh, while episodes of the UK hit comedy Little Britain have also been removed for the depiction of black people. And this one in the US, one of the biggest movies of all time, Gone with the Wind, has been temporarily withdrawn by HBO for the same reason. So thousands of you have been voting this morning. Just 17% say streaming services are right to remove the potentially offensive content. 83% say the results are overwhelming that the show should not be taken down. Matthew says you may uh, as well remove everything because someone will always find something offensive. And Kelly says, though, 
Good. There's no room for, uh, there's no need for racism. Um, Chris, is this a knee-jerk reaction or something that was long overdue? Well, it's a knee-jerk reaction because sensitivities are so high in the United States at the moment. And I can understand that until the United States calm the farm, you don't want to upset, you know, the apple cart. You don't want to um, upset people and give them any motivation or reason to cause... Uh, violence to other people. However, that said, you can't rewrite history. And you mm. just hope that these kinds of measures are very, very temporary. You, you can't hide the fact that, you know, black history is about slavery in the United States, which is probably the origin of where the United States is at right now. So we can't rewrite history. Get over it. Get on with it. There are parts of our history we've just got to confront and maybe even learn from by showing these um, depictions of black people, like in Gone with the Wind. I just hope it's very temporary. I understand why they're doing it, but don't rewrite history. Jackie, your thoughts? I mean, some of those scenes are uncomfortable to watch. Yeah, of course they're uncomfortable, but I too hope they're only temporary. You can't hide things under the carpet. We've got to get on with our lives. And, um, you know, even, even when it comes to producing comedy, um, when, you know, when you're taking the mickey out of out of someone or something, um, that's very, for me, that's very Australian. It's very Larrikinism. Uh, what are we supposed to just... How far... Where's the stopping line here? Where's the stopping line? Yeah, look, that's it. You start to ban one thing, where do you stop? Yeah, it can be a slippery stop? slope. Yeah. Hey, um, Chris, Jackie, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thanks, Good Thank you very much for having on.